Hello guys, gonna be going over the prize picks MLB slate for Sunday, June 10th. Um, I'd say this board I'm liking it, a, I would say compared to yesterday, a lot better. So, get into it, first inning runs a lot. There's one that I, I mean, I think it's clearly the best one on the board. Mets and Marlins under no run first innings because it's Sandy Alcantara and Taiwan Walker. It's a negative 160 for the under. I mean, it makes sense. Both of these guys, Alcantara, he's he's a Cy Young candidate. Taiwan Walker's been really good as of late. The Marlins, they have some injuries right now. They're also not that great when they're on the road. So that plays in Walker's favor. And I would say, you know, this one, first inning run props, as as great of a like near lock maybe for some of these look at times, still, you know, someone can just solo and just break the under and it doesn't hit. So... I would say for these, like, I kind of, I never really trust these ones, like, even cores, you know, I'm not always going to be like, you know, this is a lock, put your, put all your money on it or something, so, this one, I would say if you want to play a first inning run prop, this would be the best one by far. Now, getting into official plays, Eric Lauer, he was at 5, that was a lock, but now it's at 5.5. So, not going to play it, just I don't like to play anything when it's moved. Pitcher fantasy score, Zach Greinke. This was the guy that I paired with Lauer originally, but we did get some other plays that I, I just like better. So, that's what I've been using Lauer with, or what I did. But Lauer is 5 at with. Greinke's under 21.5 against the Guardians. Zach Greinke, he's a vet, but he's just not that great. You know, he's definitely declining of age, but because of age, and... He has the lowest, he ranks low, low, like the lowest in Ks. Uh, percentile in the league, 1%. And then everything, I mean, he's expecting, expected ERA, batting average, all these expected numbers are really bad. And sure, he doesn't walk much, but when he's getting hit, he's getting hit hard. And that's why his velocity is really low, it's down. And his expected ERA, it's 589, batting average 317. This guy just gets hit, and the Guardians, this is against righties, they're going to be away here. They rank 6th in WRC Plus at 108, 20.2% K percentage, but honestly, th they probably won't strike out more than, say, three times against Granky here at most, so they're just a contact team. I don't think Granky can get the strikeouts, and if you're not going to strikeouts and you have these bad of numbers when you're allowing a ton of hits, supposed to allow a ton of runs, I mean, that's just going to be trouble. You know, this Guardians lineup um, right here. Like, Jose Ramirez, he seems fine now. I mean, he's he wasn't really hitting well, striking out a lot. But, I mean, after you know, these past couple of games, I think he's definitely back to uh, normal. Josh Naylor's back in the lineup as well. So, there are just a lot of good bats here. Nolan Jones up with the team. So, this is a pretty good spot, in my opinion. Like, please sack's not that great. And we're actually going to be targeting him. Um on the other side but i just think Granky without the strikeout also probably i would say not a good win chance either um guardians being favored this game so a win quality start there is very important for a guy like Granky who's not going to strike out a ton of guys and i think this is just too high probably should be like 18.5 and then or I'll, I'll go with the leans at the end of the video so just going through all the official plays right now Josh Bell over 6.5 against Ian Anderson. Ian Anderson pulling up his numbers and then Josh Bell. So Josh Bell is switch hitter. He's better against righties. He actually hasn't been that bad against lefties either, but this is what we want him. Ian Anderson, a righty who has lost his strikeout stuff. He walks a lot of guys, 20 percentile, allows hard hits. His expected ERA, 4.11, so better than what it is right now. But you look at what he's throwing. He just doesn't have that K stuff. Fastball change up curve for lefties. And then Josh Bell, he walks a ton. He doesn't strike out. And then for those pitches again, fastball change curve. Fastball right there, change and curve. Really three of the best pitches next to the sinker tied with the change up there. But these are just very good pitches that Josh Bell sees. So this looks just to be a very good spot. Probably should be like 7.5. And again, just Anderson hasn't been that great. He's actually regressed this season, which is not something we typically see with uh, younger pitchers. But 
that's the case here. Um, that was on the road, so you possibly could get an additional at bat in the top of the ninth. And then while we're on Josh Bell, he's actually available for runs and RBIs. This would be my favorite play um, for what we have right now because there's no more Laura 5Ks. So Josh Bell, favorite play, 0.5 runs and RBIs. That's my preferred one just because I think this category is the best one when you're looking for value, of course, for the good plays, uh, good players. So that's why I like this one. He's batting. You know, it, he kind of moves around like 3, 4, 5, but... Projected bat third, he's also better against righty, so he usually does bat on the higher side of 3-4-5. And Juan Soto, usually a staple to bat second. And usually going to definitely be up to plate, or be up to bat with Soto, uh, maybe on base. He also walks a ton, Nelson Cruz with his power behind Bell. So he's just right in between the guys that are the best hitters for the Nationals. Going back to hitter fantasy score... It's going to be Andrew Benintendi, 6.5. So one of the guys that we're going to target for Kansas City, targeting Aaron, or Zach Plesak. Benintendi at 6.5. He's a lefty, of course, and he hits better against righties. Plesak, he struggles on the road, and Kansas City will be the home team in this one. <sighs> Pulling up Benintendi. So... Looking at Plesak, his number is very poor. Um, it's actually a good thing. I would say, actually, not like good. Rather, that's for total bases. But when you see a guy that isn't good but also limits walks, that's definitely good for like a total bases prop. But this isn't what we're going for Benintendi. It's 6.5 fantasy points over. And for Plesak, his numbers, he's struggled against lefties this season. Um, and then the pitch types, it's the fastball change and curve. Ben Intendi, fastball change curve for him, four run value, one and zero. But these definitely are the better ones, sinker uh, up there. But this is a good spot. Lefties, righties, he's batting 340 against righties this season. So very good hitter for average at least. And, you know, Plesak just really, he's been lucky um, this season. You're looking... Look at his numbers, um, expected area of nearly two runs higher, and uh, he just pitches poorly on the road. You, know, you look at the splits, almost two earned runs also higher when he's away. So that's the reason for Ben Intendi. And then Adolis Garcia, he is at is it six, yeah, at six. Um, taking on Dylan Bundy. Dylan Bundy, the one good thing here is that he has lost his strikeout stuff. So for any guy that will strike out a ton, like Adolis, that's going to be good because hopefully that means he will be able to make contact with the ball, put it in play, and when he does, he has a very high hard hit rate. A very good hitter when he does hit the ball. These numbers, this blue, all should be minimized by um, Bundy here. Just the K, the whiff, chase rate, yeah, it's good, but like the strikeout, though, that's what really matters. That's the main thing. Yeah, chase rate. We do have to factor that in, but Adolis, I mean, this line, it is low, and I think it's just too low for Bundy right now uh, for the kind of pitcher he is. Bundy going to be on the road. He's also a guy that just struggles when he's away, and the pitch types for Bundy against righties, slider, fastball, and sinker for Adolis. You know, not the best run values, but slider right there, zero, uh, fastball, sinker. So you can take a look at that. Nothing like fantastic, but the expected numbers at least like see the sinker. Yeah, that's very good. And he has reverse splits. Batting 271, 11 homers on the area against righties. And then for Bundy, his splits also, I mean, for homers, it's kind of, I mean, similar for righties and lefties because he has faced a lot more batters when it comes to righties. The next one, it's going to be Trey Turner at 8.5. This is a good stolen base spot against Drew Smiley. Smiley going to be coming back from the IL. So it could be on a limit. But Trey Turner, he's um, he has had like reverse splits. But he's actually been kind of more traditional uh, recently. And Drew Smiley, for him, um, he just allows stolen bases for a lefty. And Trey Turner, I mean, I don't even really need to pull up the numbers. He's the fastest player in the league, I would say. 100 spin speed percentile. He has the platoon advantage. He knows how to run. I mean, he's the 
I mean, he's led the league in stolen bases, and he just gets on base a ton. You know, he's had, I think, he's had like a huge um, hit streak. Um, well, it ended recently, but this guy just gets on base a ton. Of course, when you add in the talent of this lineup, of course, now with Mookie Betts back healthy, just the run, the RBIs, all the opportunities are going to be really good for Trey Turner. And then if he does manage to steal a base in a good matchup for stolen bases, he's definitely going over 8.5. And then looking at Smiley, he he limits hard hits, but he doesn't strike guys out. And his splits, they're very noticeable against righties. Um, and actually, this is why we're going to just go right into total bases. Moki Betts, um, he's been better against left-handed pitching. He's been a reverse guy, but seems like he's more traditional now. And for the pitch types of Drew Smiley, um, curve, cut, and sinker. So first for the splits, you know, just batting a lot higher for lefties is average, and then curve, cut, sinker, curve, cut, sinker. Eight, six, one run values, just absolutely demolishing what Smiley throws. So looks really good. If we do get a one point five total basis prop, it is not currently up, but ju just giving it to you guys now in case we do get this out uh, for the sake of this video. But of course, I'll post it if it does become uh, available on the board. And then the hits and walks prop. So the one thing that stood out about Smiley is the walks, 82 percentile. So he does a good job limiting that. And um, usually for him, not the case, but sometimes when it's you look at the walks, he, they usually pitchers they limit walks the same side. Uh, so that would mean Muncie a lefty lefty matchup it wouldn't be that great of a spot for Muncie and Muncie this guy's not good he's batting 160 he walks a ton though that's why he's available otherwise this would just be a lock for the under but because of the walks like he'll walk twice a game but he really doesn't get hits and that's why I'm going to be taking the under uh for hits and walks at 1.5 here just you know I'm going to hope that maybe Muncie doesn't get a hit. If he does, he doesn't walk or something because this is definitely a guy that when you look at hitting-wise, this season he's just really poor. You compare it to the other guys on the board, I think this one's just an under against Smiley who does not walk many guys. And then runs and RBIs for the guys that I haven't mentioned. Ahmed Rosario, um, Wynn Merrifield, same game, so I'll mention them together. But this game looks like to be a good one. Um... Again, attacking Granky and Plesak with their teammates. Um, so, I mean, I would, well, Rosario, but if we do get, like, some props for their teammates, possibly, depending on what they are. But, yeah, just Rosario, you know, these these guys, the Guardians, they they swung they swing hot bats right now against Granky. He's not going to strike many guys out. Jose Ramirez, Josh, Josh Naylor again. Batting behind Rosario, he just needs to get on base pretty much. Like, I'm pretty confident the talent behind him, they can drive him in. So that's why for Rosario, and if for Wynn Merrifield, please sack his numbers, uh, as you guys saw, they're not good. And Wynn Merrifield, he's a leadoff guy. He's going to get on base. Bobby Witt, back in the lineup. Andrew Benintendi, a good hitter against righty. So I have the confidence that Merrifield can get on base, also can steal, get into scoring position. So I like both of them. And then Jorge Polanco, last official play. The concern for him is he just bats too low in the lineup. Um... I mean, Byron Buxton, he, he's been getting some days off. So if he gets a rest day, maybe, you know, they could move Polanco higher in the lineup. But if he's batting fifth, I'm fine. But it's probably going to be like a tier three play. Um, but Dunning, he struggles against lefties. Polanco hits better from the left side. He's a switch hitter, so he always will have the platoon advantage. He's back now healthy. Um, you know, this seems like Dunning isn't that great of a pitcher we don't have to scare be scared of him in Polanco he has some good numbers this season so that's why I do like this one um, but it really does depend on where he is in the batting order now some personal plays Logan Gilbert under 30.5 for the fantasy score um, Shogun Otani over 7.5 over 1.5 for him as well he's available for total bases it's Austin Vaughn. He hits the pitches really well, but of course he does steal, so that's why I like his projection for face score as well. And then his teammate, actually, Taylor Ward. Vaughn will walk guys, but the thing about that is this is not a good ballpark for righties, and Vaughn does not go deep, so they could bring in some bullpen guy that 
just is a lot, a lot tougher than Voth, making it hard for Ward. Um, and then for stolen base targets, Bundy, Ian Anderson, uh, part of the reason also why I do like Adolis, um, and also Semin if you want, but not really on my radar. Ian Anderson, Dane Dunning, Nick Pavetta, Jim, Jimson Tyon, Logan Gilbert, Michael Kopech, Drew Smiley, Tywin Walker, and Sandy Alcantara. So, you know, a lot of stolen base guys pretty much. These guys are always going to be giving up like 70% plus stolen base success rate. That's what I use when it comes to these pitchers, the ones that I name. But if you're going to play right now, it's going to be Josh Bell um, with Lauer gone. It's Granky and Rosario next. So, uh, Adol is probably also tier one play. But I will post these plays up on my Twitter. Make sure you leave a like for the video, of course. Check my Twitter out. Link will, is always in the description if you don't already follow me on there. But it is Sunday, so we got a lot of early games for today. And good luck on this slate, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.